And if you have your Bibles, turn with me to the book of Genesis. The book of Genesis. Be gone anywhere else you've gone too far. The book of Genesis, the first book of the Bible. Genesis in the 22nd chapter. There is a narrative of scripture there that is uh, familiar to some of us, perhaps not so familiar to others. One of my favorite narratives, but there is a portion in it. The overall story, though, I believe is appropriate for the occasion for today. Genesis chapter number 22, beginning with verse number one, it says, sometime later, God tested Abraham. He said to him, Abraham, here I am, he replied. Then God said, take your son, your only son, Isaac, whom you love, and go to the region of Moriah, sacrifice him there as a burnt offering on one of the mountains I will tell you about. Early the next morning, Abraham got up and saddled his donkey. He took with him two of his servants and his son, Isaac. When he had cut enough wood for the burnt offering, he set out for the place God had told him about. On the third day, Abraham looked up and saw the place in the distance. He said to his servants, stay here with the donkey while I and the boy go over there. We will worship and then we will come back to you. Abraham took the wood for the burnt offering and placed it on his son Isaac. And he himself carried the fire and the knife. As the two of them went on together, Isaac spoke up and said to his father Abraham, Father? Yes, my son, Abraham replied. The fire and wood are here, Isaac said, but where is the lamb for the burnt offering? Abraham answered, God himself will provide the lamb for the burnt offering, my son. And the two of them went on together. When they reached the place God had told him about, Abraham built an altar there and arranged the wood on it. He bound his son Isaac and laid him on the altar on top of the wood. Then he reached out his hand and took the knife to slay his son. But the angel of the Lord called out to him from heaven, Abraham, Abraham. Here I am, he replied. Do not lay a hand on the boy, he said. Do not do anything to him. Now I know that you fear God because you have not withheld from me your son, your only son. Abraham looked up and there in a thicket he saw a ram caught by its horns. He went over and took the ram and sacrificed it as a burnt offering instead of his son. So Abraham called that place, the Lord will provide. And to this day it is said, on the mountain of the Lord, it will be provided. Amen. Amen. On Father's Day this year, I want to talk about top lessons fathers must teach. Top lessons fathers must teach. It is, it is definitely a message for fathers but it's also a message for any believer. But these are valuable lessons. I am blessed to have an outstanding father. And my dad taught me all kinds of lessons. One of the earliest I can remember was how to ride a bike without training wheels. We were out at the parking lot at O.D.Y. at high school. And I remember, I can still remember, the bike was orange, 20 inch bike. The wind in my face, and I could feel my dad's steady hand on the seat. I remember hearing his voice in my ear as he was running alongside of the bike. I also remember how it felt to feel him let go and to feel myself riding under my own power and to hear him cheering me on. In that moment, I was his hero. He was proud of me because I was on my own riding my bike. There were other lessons that he taught me. He taught me how to catch and to throw a baseball. He taught me how to love and appreciate the Dallas Cowboys. What a wonderful lesson that is. <laughs> Brothers, y'all all right? <laughs> oh, we did beat y'all, didn't we? In the, in the playoffs, okay. 
it, it taught me it taught me some lessons. One day we were riding in the car, and I had a bottle of orange soda and some peanuts. But dad taught me a lesson. He said you put the peanuts inside the soda. Some of y'all have done that before. You just don't want to say nothing. Great lesson. Some other lessons my dad taught me that I won't share with you here publicly. And some lessons he taught me, he taught me by default. But the point I'm making is, as I said before, that when God makes a man a father, he doesn't make a mistake. And whether you know it or not, you are teaching your children something. If you are an attentive father, you teach. If you are not an attentive father, if you are an absentee father, you're still teaching. And so the choice is yours. What kind of lessons do you want to teach? Do you want to teach the lessons of nurture, love, and care? Or do you want to teach lessons of abandonment? That God uses fathers to teach their children lessons. But the greatest lesson that we teach, brothers, is that when our children see us, in theory, they ought to see God. That when a child interacts with a father, that child ought to be getting a glimpse of what it is to be in relationship with God. That God expects us brothers to represent him before our children and our families. That's why in scripture, Christ tells husbands to love your wives as Christ gave the love the church, giving himself up for her as a ransom that we are to represent God and love our children and our families just the same way that God loves us. Here in the text, we see a father who is teaching some lessons to his son. And you know what? You don't have to all have it all figured out to teach your children. There are a lot of things that I'm teaching my children that I'm learning as I go. And here, the Bible says that God calls Abraham to test him. And while he's testing Abraham, he's also teaching Abraham. And while Abraham is learning, Abraham is teaching something to his son Isaac. There are a lot of things, multiple things happening and going on here in this narrative. And what I want to do is I just want to pull out some things that I believe are some very valuable lessons that any father ought to be intentional about teaching to his children. And if you're not a father, anybody, these are lessons that anybody ought to be learning that we ought to be valuing and passing on to other individuals. Are you praying with me? Because it's Father's Day, we don't want the restaurants to get too crowded. So we're going to move through this. But, but nonetheless, that God is teaching lessons and God is using fathers and God is using fathers to teach valuable lessons. And I want to charge our fathers today to accept the role and the responsibility with honor and be your child's first teacher, be your child's best teacher, be your child's greatest teacher. Lesson number one that Abraham is teaching here is that all that we have comes from God. Now, Abraham does not explicitly tell this to Isaac in our text, but it is inherent within the text, especially if you know the story of how Abraham receives his son Isaac. You see, Abraham becomes a father late in life when he's around 100 years old. Who wants to be a daddy at 100? I have no idea. But nonetheless, with the promise of a child, God told Abraham that he would be the father of many nations. One of the best things, the best lessons that we can teach our children is we can start helping them understand principles of stewardship. And the, what's most fundamental to stewardship is understanding the principle of ownership. That means then that everything belongs to God. That's what the scripture says. The earth is the Lord's and everything in it. King James says the earth is the Lord's and the fullness therein. And so we must teach our children that yes, you have it at your disposal, but it did not come from you. It came from God. 
Yes, we have a nice home, but it is only because God blessed us with it. Yes, you can wear nice shoes, but it's only by God's goodness and his grace. You can talk about my shoes if you want to, but they came from God. And you can talk about somebody else's stuff, but don't think that you have it that way because you deserve it, because you've earned it, because you've manufactured it and built it yourself. It comes from God. And so we have to teach that to our children because if we don't teach it now, they will grow up thinking that the world owes them everything. They will grow up thinking that they are entitled to everything. And they will grow up claiming your stuff as their own stuff. They won't have regard for anybody else's stuff and think that everything ought to come to them. But it's only by the grace of God that we have what we have. That God gives us what he gives us, not because we deserve it but because he loves us and so Abraham is teaching this to his son as God says I want you to give your one and only son to me as a burnt offering as a sacrifice no we don't hear this in the conversation but it will come up but you see it's the second point that really drives home and reinforces the first point everything we have comes from God but the second point is this, that nothing is off limits from God. Now this is a powerful lesson right here, because you see, Abraham's not teaching this to Isaac in the moment, but it is a lesson that Abraham is learning of himself. That God has given Abraham this son against all odds. And I'm sure at some point along the journey, Maybe not on this journey, but sometime in their life, Abraham probably explained to Isaac that it messed it up the first time. Well, you see, Isaac is considered in Scripture Abraham's only son because he was the son of the covenant, but he was not Abraham's first son. Abraham had another son before Isaac, and his name was Ishmael. But Abraham conceived Ishmael in his own time, in his own way. Anybody ever got ahead of God, got outside of God's will, made the wrong choice, made some mistakes in your life? Anybody been there before? Any brothers ever been there before? You got ahead of God, made the wrong choice, made the wrong decision. And so God now is saying that you did it my way. I gave you Isaac and against all odds, I want you now to give me that son your only son, the son that you love, the son that I blessed you with in your old age, I want you to offer him as a burnt offering, as a sacrifice. God is saying, I want you to take the only son that I gave you and I want you to kill him and kill him for me. That means that God is teaching Abraham right now that everything you have, I don't care how precious it is to you, that it will, must all become to me. It doesn't matter what God blesses you with. If God gave it to you, God can take it away from you if he so pleases. Job teaches us that when he lost all of his children, he lost all of his fortune, he lost all of his houses, and Job tore his clothes and said, naked I came into this world, naked I shall leave, the Lord giveth, and the Lord taketh away, but blessed be the name of the Lord. But Abraham is teaching his son, son, God will bless you with some stuff. But don't let the stuff that God blesses you with become your idol. Now Abraham isn't teaching this to Isaac right now because he's learning it within his own text. But brothers, how many of us got some Isaacs in our lives? Is Isaac your job? Is it your career? Is it your house? Is it your car? Is it your reputation? Is it your degree? Is it something about you that represents you and you're boasting and bragging and telling everyone God gave this to me and my identity is all wrapped up in it. Just know that God can take it any time he wants. Nothing is off limits to God. It's a valuable lesson. And listen, if we don't teach this lesson to our children, then our children will completely miss how to relate to God. Well, you see, God is so much more than the giver of blessings. 
God is so much more than the genie in the bottle. God is so much more than the cosmic bellhop. God is so much more than the man upstairs who can pour out blessings that we don't have room enough to receive. God is so much more than Santa Claus 24-7. God is so much more than the tooth fairy. God is so much more than the one who can bring you and make your, blow your mind and, 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 and open up your life and bring you and put you on a pedestal. But God is the God of the universe and that God can make good come out of anything. That God owes the world and the palm of his hand and so God does not need good weather to bring sunshine God is the weatherman and God knows how to bless us and God can bless you when you broke God can bless you when you unemployed God can bless you when you're flat on your back God can bless you when don't nobody else love you God can keep you and he doesn't need the trinkets in our lives to bless us he's God and therefore nothing is off limits. And sometimes God got to take some stuff to show us how powerful he is. Oh, can I get a witness in here? Anybody ever had God to take some stuff out of your life? And it wasn't until it was removed that you realized, God, you are a good God. Anybody ever had your health taken from you and then you realize just how good God is? Anybody been down to your last dime? You lost your job. You lost your friends. You lost your family. And it was in those moments of nothingness that God spoke to you. And God said, I got you. You're my child. That nothing is off limits to God. And right now we need to find out what is our Isaac. What is it that I have held on to so tightly? Acknowledging the fact that it comes from God, but God wants us to know it came from me, but it can't be bigger than me. It came from me, but it can't be more important than me. It came from me, but it can't have more of your affection than me. It came from me, but it cannot have more of your strength than me. Quit being so worried about the gift that you miss the giver. I am the giver of every good and perfect gift. And so I don't want you to get it twisted for one minute. You don't look the way you look because I gave you good health. You don't look the way you look because I gave you a good job. You don't have what you have because I did X, Y, and Z. You have what you have because I sit on my throne. And I am the God of the universe. I can speak whatever I want into existence. You don't have to ask somebody else's permission. You just live, honor, and trust me. And watch me open up doors that no man can open. Won't he do it? Yes, he will. God wants us to know there's nothing off limits to him, but there's more. There's another lesson. There's another lesson. Abraham is taking his son Isaac and they're going up to Mount Moriah. Mount Moriah is not just a short walk from the land of the Philistines. Mount Moriah is not just a walk around the corner. Mount Moriah is not just a, 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 a sunrise and sunset walk, but Mount Moriah is a three-day journey. And there's a line here that when they reach the region of Moriah, Abraham tells his servants, stay behind with the donkeys, while me and the boy will go over yonder to worship. And when we're done, we shall return. Lesson number three is this, that God, that worship belongs to God. Brothers, fathers, when we teach our children, our children ought to learn who God is from us. Our children ought to learn how to relate to God from us. Our children ought to see who God is through our own lives. So therefore, brothers, worship must become a part of your life. Our sons see us shave. They see us comb our hair. They see us polish our shoes. They see us wash our cars. They see us for seas and lift weights. They see us take care of our bodies. They see how we treat their mothers. They see how we honor their grandmothers. 
They see how we do all of these other things. They see us get up in the morning and put the tie on and dress for work. They see us hang out with the homeboys and chill. But brothers, they need to see us drop to our knees on occasion. They need to see us reading the pages of scripture. They need to hear us call on the name of the Lord. They need to see us in the choir stand saying, Oh Lord, oh Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. They need to hear us declare that he is the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. They need to hear us declare that God is our refuge and our strength. They need to hear us say that he is the shepherd and we are his sheep. They need to see us at worship. And Abraham has his son with him as they're going to the top of Mount Moriah. And he's sharing with these servants that stay here with the donkeys. Me and my son are going to worship. Of all the things that I can take my son to with me, none of them would be any more important than for him to go with me to worship. My son sees me preach Sunday in and Sunday out, and I get a tongue lashing just about every week. Why are you screaming? You talk too long. I didn't get this, and I didn't get that, but I just know that one day, one day it will click with him that my daddy was worshiping before God. That my daddy was using his gifts that God gave him. And that one day the light will come on in his own life. And so brothers, I'm not telling that your children need to see you preaching, but they ought to see you worshiping. And there's a difference between preaching and worship. There's a little story about a father who had a son who was turning six. And he asked his son, what did he want for his birthday? And the son said, well, daddy, it doesn't, it doesn't, I'm not, it doesn't matter. What, whatever, whatever, I'm fine. Daddy said, no, you got to tell me, you got to give me some specifics. Do you want a baseball glove? And the son said, dad, whatever you want me to have, it's fine. He said, no, tell me, do you want a soccer ball or do you want a football? Do you want this board game or that board game? The son was like, daddy, it doesn't matter, whatever it is. He said, well, son, you got to give me something. And so the boy said, well, dad, I tell you what. You can get me a football if you go that way, I'll have it and you and I can play together. Go ahead and buy the football, daddy, and me and you can play catch. But if you don't have time, just buy me a soccer ball and I can play that with my friends. So the father walked away, scratching his head, and went and talked to the boy's mother. And mama said, well, what he's trying to tell you is that it's not necessarily the gift that concerns him, but it is the time that you give him that he doesn't want the gift, but he wants the giver. And so you got to teach your children that worship isn't about the songs that we sing. Worship isn't about the drums that you hear in the sanctuary. Worship isn't about all these trivial matters, about the color scheme and the colors of the chairs and what people wear and what they got on. But worship is about the God of heaven. And so... Um, needs to know that you don't have to be able to sing good to worship God. You can sing your own song. You don't have to be able to sound like Brian Lowe to give God worship. If you can just tell the Lord, Father, I thank you for another day. You worshiping right now. Father, I thank you for putting one foot in front of the other. You worshiping right now. Lord, I thank you for the clothes on my back. You worshiping right now. Father, I thank you for my mother and my father. You worship right now. Lord, if it had not been for you who was on my side, I don't know where I would be. You worshiping right now. I don't need nobody to pump and prime me. I don't need nobody to tell me it's time to worship. When I woke up this morning and opened up my eyes, it was time to give him praise. When I drove up on the parking lot this morning, I was already excited. I was going down the thinking about how good God has been to me I want my children to know that worship is important in our lives and that worship doesn't happen just on Sunday morning worship isn't about everybody else seeing what we do 
my, my preaching, I'm going to preach this way if ain't nobody sitting in these seats. Because my preaching is my worship. Because when I'm preaching, I feel the presence of God. When I declare the gospel, I know that I have the pleasure of God. I got his wind at my back. And so whether you hear or not, these chairs going to get saved today. That when I'm preaching, I'm worshiping. I don't need you to affirm what I'm saying. I know it's the truth. Because I know the Lord has been good to me. I know where the Lord has brought me from. I know what God is doing in my life. I know what God had to pull me out of. I know what God is keeping me from. I know how God is holding me and healing me. I don't need you to tell me how good God is. I know for myself. Can I get a witness in here? endures forever and so when we teaching our children if I can teach my son how to take care of his hair how to take care of his shoes how to take care of his toys I need to show him how to take care of his walk with God I need to show him how to take care of and nurture his spiritual life that if we can watch movies together and we can read books together and all of that, I'm convicted because I want my son to know that we can also read the Bible together. Amen? That worship belongs to God, but there's more. There's more. Not only that, though, there's something here. Now, this, this fourth point is that lack, lack does not stop the journey with God. It, it's... It's uh, uh, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta kind of, you gotta walk with me with this one. Lack does not stop the journey with God. Now, now Isaac perceived a lack. Isaac thought something was missing. They were walking to Moriah, and Isaac is. Now we're not to see. People think that Isaac was a cute little cuddly toddler. People think Isaac was like three and four years old. They, they thought this was a nice little tender father's son. Isaac walking, holding his daddy's pinky. No. Isaac is, is a teenager. He's, he's perhaps 15, 16 years old. He ain't no dummy. He know what's going on. Isaac know when you got wood and you got fire and you got a knife. Isaac knows something, something about to die. He, he been around his dick after all, he's watched his daddy worship. <laughs> you see, when you've seen worship and you know what happens in worship and you see some stuff, it's like when my children walk into a place and we see a piano and we see pews and we see all that, they're associated with church. Isaac sees the wood. Yeah. Isaac sees the fire. Yeah. Isaac sees the knife. <laughs> but Isaac don't see the lamb. It's in the Bible. Isaac said, Daddy... I see the wood. Daddy, I see the knife. Daddy, I see the fire. But I don't see the lamb. Now, now I'm not going to get ahead of myself, but, but Isaac sees a lack. But Abraham is teaching a very valuable lesson. Because in Isaac's eyes, they don't have all that they need. Abraham knew they had everything that they needed for the sacrifice, but Abraham still did not have all of the understanding. Without all of the understanding, Abraham still takes the journey to Moriah. Because the promise was that I will make you a father of many nations, and I will bless you through your seed, which is Isaac. And so, after giving him Isaac, Abraham knows this is it. I'm about to blow up, father of many nations. But then God says, take the one seed that you have and kill him at the place where I will show you. And Abraham is walking, saying, I'm about to blow up, but my son got to die. And I don't know how God going to fix it, but we're going to walk anyway. And can't you see Abraham walking with his son? Son? The Lord going to make a way somehow. Abraham said, son, I know we don't have the lamb, but God is going to fix this one way or another. Brothers, our pride gets us in trouble sometimes. 
Sometimes we let our pride keep us at home because we don't understand everything. My children expect daddy to know everything, but I have to tell them sometimes daddy don't know, but we still got to go. That sounded kind of good, don't it? Daddy don't know, but we still got to go. Daddy don't have all the answers, but we going to trust our heavenly father and we going to go anyway. Daddy, why is it this way? I don't know, but we going to trust God. And so you cannot allow lack to keep you from taking the journey with God. How many times have you been fed up with the world and fed up with life and you just disqualified yourself? Sitting at home throwing your own pity party. Telling everybody else that there's something wrong with everybody else. Everybody's against you. The world is against you. They're not going to hire me. They don't want me. They don't this. They don't that. Feeling sorry for yourself. What kind of lesson are you teaching your children? If you're going to be a quitter in life, then don't be surprised when your children come home saying, I ain't going back. I don't want to do it no more. I don't have to do it if I don't want to do it. And you're going to tell them you do have to do it. And what you're going to do when they say, well, you stopped. You quit. You checked out, and so you're always teaching a lesson. And so, fathers, we have the glorious privilege and opportunity to teach our children how to persevere. The world owes you nothing. What the world will guarantee you is hardship and heartache. But if we belong to God, we don't face the world by ourselves. We don't walk this road in our own strength. And so Isaac sees a lack. Isaac sees a shortage in the situation. Daddy, I see the wood. After all, Isaac had to carry the wood. Imagine that. You carry, Isaac had to carry the wood that he was going to be placed on and killed. He ain't no dummy, daddy. This picture not looking right. You got that knife in your hand. And you got the fire in your hand. I got this pile of wood in mine. And ain't nobody out here but me and you. And then they get to the place called Moriah. And then the Bible says that Abraham prepared the sacrifice. Isaac still standing there. He didn't take off running. But he know what's about to go down. He watched his daddy take the wood and place it. He watched his daddy meticulously set up the altar. And, and again, this is his daddy modeling worship before him. Had your children watched you write out a tithe check? Had your children seen you deny yourself and them something that they don't need but they want? Because you're saying we can't right now because this belongs to God. He's watching his daddy prepare the sacrifice. And then his daddy does the unthinkable. He says, come here, Isaac. And he watches as his daddy ties his hands together. He watches as his father ties his feet together. He watches as his father lays him on the altar. He, he's, he's, he ain't three years old. He's laying there watching his father get ready to worship God in this unimaginable way. He sees his daddy holding the knife. He's laying there on the altar and he's watching his daddy raise the knife. All the while he said, I asked him, where's the lamb? He never said nothing to me but that the Lord will provide. It finally dawned on him that he was the lamb. That God had already provided. That his daddy had raised the knife. He's lying there watching as his daddy gets ready to bring the knife down to kill him. His daddy told him, son, the Lord will provide. And just there between going down and killing Isaac, there is another voice. Somebody else shows up at the top of Mount Moriah. It's not just Abraham and Isaac, but there's an angel there that says, Abraham, Abraham. 
Now I know that you love the Lord your God. Don't kill him. And Isaac is laying there like, who's that? Abraham is like, the Lord will make a way. Isaac is like, who's that? And Abraham is saying, the Lord will make a way. The lesson, the last lesson that we can teach our children from this story is this, that God always makes provision. I ought to have somebody who know what I'm talking about. That the Lord always makes provision. That Isaac asked his daddy, daddy, I see the wood. Daddy, I see the fire. Daddy, I see the knife. But where is the lamb? And Abraham said, son, the Lord will make a way. And while he's laying there on the altar, there's a rustling over in his periphery. There's some rustling over in the bushes. The King James says that over in the thicket, there's a ram there hung up by his horns. That the angel says, see the ram over there. Kill the ram. But you know what? Abraham never gets the ram until he leaves the region of the Philistines. The lesson isn't learned unless he leaves the place of comfort. Fathers, there are days where our children have to see us in seasons of discomfort. We think that it's our job to protect our kids and keep them from every danger. And so we bend over backwards trying to keep their lives like a little padded sail. Never see any kind of hardship. Completely oblivious to pain and suffering. But not so with Abraham. Abraham takes his son with him on the journey. And the son gets to see that God does honor faith. What better way to teach my children that God honors faith than for them to see that daddy walk in faith. What better way for my children to see that God is real than for them to see God come through for their daddy. What better way for my father to know that God is real than for them to see that God comes through even when it looks like all the chips are down. That the deck is stacked against me. That everybody said that it cannot work and it won't make it. But there's always a ram in the bush. I don't know who I'm preaching to this morning, but God got you on a journey headed somewhere. And you don't know if he's going to be there at the end, but God is sending the ram on its way. Jewish heritage and legend would say that the ram got caught up coming from the Garden of Eden trying to meet Abraham and Isaac at the top of Mount Moriah. And the ram got caught up, but God just delayed the ram long enough to make sure that Abraham followed through with his promise. And so the Lord waited to the very last minute. And I know some of y'all want to say, God, why didn't you give me the ram before I left the house? Lord, why didn't you give me the ram so that I could have some peace? along the journey but the Lord knows if I gave you the ram before you left you never would have left you would have been trying to sacrifice at home you would have been trying to do it in your own comfort but I wanted you to do it my way because I want you to know that I am real and Charlotte Caesar said that he is an on time God he may not come when you want him but he's always on time and so God always comes through when we need him to. God always oh, shows up when we need him. God always keeps us when we can't keep ourselves. And so fathers, on Father's Day, make sure you teach these lessons to your children. That God is a God of faithfulness who owns everything and gives it to us. Worthy of our worship. That God, don't be ashamed to walk with your children when you don't have all the answers. And don't be ashamed to tell them when you don't know. But also have confidence in telling them the Lord will make a way. And when he does make a way, make sure your children know God did this, daddy didn't do it. Go ahead and tell them as much as you'll be tempted.
daddy did. See how daddy saved the day. Don't lie to him. Tell him the Lord made a way. The Lord is real. The Lord will keep us. The Lord will watch over us. The Lord is holding us. It was nobody but God. Let your children see you get happy. Let your children see you shed tears of joy. Let your children see you bless his name. Let your children see you act a fool. Let your children see you go in. Let your children hear you say, Father, I thank you. And if it had not been for you, God, I don't know where I would be. It's only by your grace that I have what I have. Amen. Amen. Happy Father's Day. Amen. Amen. Amen.